back here at Kanye Rome Bar, man. The most authentic podcast out here at Tulsa Life. Let's go. Man, sitting here with an entrepreneur, a father, a actor, a rapper, uh, one of the most amazing people that we have yet to meet, Mr. Joey Abrid in the house, baby. Let's go. Man, really quick background. For the people that don't know, you are an entrepreneur. Yeah. Tell us about your journey. You're not located just in one area. Pomona, Jorupa Valley, and Paris, and pop-ups. Yes, sir. Again, I remember you on IG when you were posting your pop-ups, and you you go through hiccups, right? And I think again, when we talk about right at the beginning, hiccups is what is what makes us. Yeah. Hiccups, the bad times, the hard moments is what shapes us who we are, who we are right now, and when we go down the line of hey, what our history is. We remember the good times and when we celebrated, but damn, we remember those, those hard blows, those yeah. hard blows, man. Sometimes, yeah, you got to go through those and turn those lessons into blessings. And that's pretty much it, you know, like learn how to flip it, flip the script and come see that light at the end of the tunnel. And sometimes yeah, you have to go through what you have to go through in order to know what light is. You must have gone through the dark. You must have acknowledged darkness. You must have known what, you know, the dark is to appreciate man. light, you know, and that's pretty much journey you know of a lot of successful people stories and, mm-hmm. and um you know beautiful successful stories you know when when did you figure out there was there was blessing in, in the chaos again coming from Esereno, coming from uh growing up over there you know you mentioned er, er, right right at the beginning that you, you you grew up in a in a in a city that it has a lot of great people but there's still chaos just like any other city so um, pretty much when I noticed the blessings through the chaos was, uh, I was stabbed twice in, uh, October 28th, 2014, a couple of days before Halloween Eva was in the air. The dude who stabbed me had a devil tattooed on his neck. Um, and pretty much it was a battle for my soul. That's the way I've told the story to this day. I was stabbed twice. Uh, my kind of, it punctured my intestine. I had to, wow. they had to do surgery, a lot of stuff. Um, I went through craziness in that hospital. Um. And that was the real turning point in my life. I, I pretty much just changed my whole life around. And through the chaos of me being at a, at a club, you know, with my friends aggressively, one of my friends was getting jumped. I didn't know they had a knife. And pretty much I jumped in for my friend. They ended up stabbing me twice on my stomach. I got the hood zipper, you know, that surgery that a lot of people in the hoods get, you know, pretty much they open up your whole stomach from mid stomach all the way down. And, you know, and yeah, and, that was the moment, October 28th, that happened. And within a few days, my children walked in, my Bumblebee, my Iron Man, and my Ninja, because they were dressed in their, you know, Halloween costumes. It was Halloween. I was there for Halloween, and uh, it was a spiritual moment. I just seen them from far. I was I was morphined up. I had, a, had like, a tube, you know, in my neck. And as long as I was breathing properly, um, I was able to press a button to give me a morphine shot. So the dreams that I had there and the dreams, it wasn't a – white long-haired uh it wasn't a white long-haired male and it wasn't a person with horns and you would have you know for my soul it was colors it was a darkness and it was light and i was able to distinguish what that meant and when i see my kids coming through that doorway talking about dad we heard you got in a car accident of course because we didn't yeah, tell yeah. them that Most definitely i got stabbed you know we we're trying to protect that information from them and dad you got in a car accident and i remember just being under the morphine state and fresh out of dreams in and out of nightmares and and just their brightness was, was amazing. Once again, my, my Bumblebee, my Ninja, and my Iron Man, they, they were dressed in their costumes because they were on the way to trick-or-treat. I was still in the hospital. And from there, like, I just started bawling. And that was, like, the ch- changing point in my life. Tremendously. I, I literally changed my life from that moment on. It's engraved. Yeah, bro. So from there on, I stopped drinking. I, um, I just changed my life around the way I never went in a, you know, a strip club ever again, never I got stabbed in a strip club, you know, and uh, I never stepped foot in a strip club. I ho- hardly even ever stepped into a club. I Probably one club, like a nightclub ever since then. Um, I stopped watching sports. I stopped drinking. To me, it was, I, I got out of the box, the beer box, the pizza box, the backyard box, the, the the TV box. Like, I literally got out of the box to the point where 
I couldn't, I don't, I don't, I don't entertain none of that. I don't watch wow. sports. I don't, I don't follow it. I don't invest no time in that news. I haven't watched news for many years. Like I have my kids stay away from that. When my kids go to family members' house, my mom's house and all that people that I, that watch news, I, I tell them, make sure you guys don't know news around my kids and know, I don't even want them hearing it subconsciously in another room or nothing. What, I mean, why, why is that? I, I, that's very um, intriguing for the people that are listening. They're like, probably like, okay, why, why is he protecting his kids from pretty much? Um, I know it sounds cliche, but no, I, 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 I woken, you know, I, I woke into a lot of the, the things that like the fear based mechanisms, all that stuff that were just keep like, I started seeing the world for what it is, you know, and, um, yeah. different after that moment of getting stabbed and, and going through my nightmares and dreams, I got out of there like, dude, like yeah. more, more enlightened to what, yeah. what the world really is. And, how we're controlled and how we're just, you know, they install these fear based mechanisms to us and, and, you know, and pretty much controlling. And, yeah. you know, I kind of went, I went deep with my whole conspiracy kind of ways of, of, of looking at life and yeah. researching a lot, even though since I was little, I've always had connections with Indians and native, you know, Aztec, Mexica stuff. I had dreams and pretty much me getting stabbed and all that, like those dreams that I had there. And from there on, I, I began my whole journey of, spiritual evolving and connecting mm. with with medicine medicina learning about my culture the history and and certain things that i i started reading upon it was like i already knew like my, my yeah. soul knows like i've been here before this ain't my first rodeo like isn't it crazy when like you get to a certain position a certain time or a certain event you're like and i feel like i've been here before yeah bro. Creo que ya me pasó. yeah and then you're at the same time you're like coming to realization like okay i haven't gone through this at this moment but I feel like I already have. And it gets you thinking like, okay, so I know how to maneuver. Like, I've, I've already, I put in context everything that's happening, right? And like, there, I think there's always signs that happen to us. Siempre hay señales que, hey, if you do this or whatever, you're going to get it. Bro, like, this happens. Yeah, bro. I mean, the soul is a, is a marvelous. Once you start doing deep soul work and start, you know, researching history of just yeah. what the soul is and, just what life is and what this human experience is and, and you go deep and yeah. you know for those who seek you shall find you know for those who definitely you know want to learn more about the deepness of spirituality reincarnations all that past lives and trauma and you know pretty much generational traumas being passed down and all that and once you start decoding mm -hmm. all that you're able to pinpoint you know like certain things and heal and heal traumas and pains and break that web that cycle and it's a beautiful thing. And sometimes it takes a horrible, you know, near death experience. It takes, you know, which yeah. I had, you know, when I got stabbed and it takes people going to the brinks of them seeing that light, you know, and then coming back and like, nope, it wasn't your time, you know, and that's pretty much, you know, I know many stories people you hear, oh yeah, I seen the light and pretty much that's, it's real. You know, I seen the light, I seen the darkness. And it like I said, it wasn't a person with horns and a devil like person. It wasn't a Jesus like person. It was energy. It was darkness. It was light. And, the light was calling me more than anything, and it was a real battle, you know. And uh, pretty do you, much. Do you think before before that moment, you were playing with that idea of life and death? Um, before that moment, uh, I had changed a lot already, but I, there were still certain things that I wasn't able to master. That mm. incident allowed me to master it. Um, I had, you know, already stopped the whole gang banging before that. I, I was heavily involved as a youngster with with drugs and and gang banging and uh. And heavy drug use, you know, I was yeah. a meth addict for about five years from when I was 15 or 20. Um, I didn't, I didn't attend high school. I attended high school for two months, never went to no high school dances, no prom. That's one of the biggest things that kind of hurt me. Like nowadays, you know, it's like, um, you know, I, I know when there's prom season in house, you know, like you drive by that, the, yeah. the, you know, and they're taking pictures. I know yeah, what the yeah. corset is. I know like you see the limo, stretched out limo. Yeah, and it, like, but you never had it. And I never had it, bro. That's one of the things that like, I've never been, attended no high school dances, none of that. And like, that's one of my biggest kind of, emotional like touching you know even in movies you see movies and like oh, man. they're talking about the, the dances and getting ass and all that like that's one of my biggest things that like damn i didn't you never had to go through that. it you know i never experienced the but pretty much yeah um so i had a master at by the time i was 20 you know i kind of had already left you know i was more i've always been just a little bit you know they they called me clever as a youngster in my gang and that was my name because pretty much i was always on a different level i was always on pretty much you know more the money hustling kind of you know gang yeah. member instead of the aggressive killing, you know, <laughs> gang, but, you know, but I had to do what I had to do when I was younger. And, uh, so like I said, when I got stabbed, I had already mastered a lot of the stuff that yeah. could have taken my life at a young age, but I was still dabbling with 
the life your unfaithfulness and partying. Yeah. And, Isn't it crazy? Like sometimes like you're already going through this, this whole life changing experience. You're still dabbling. How you say you're still dabbling with the other side of it. But then all of a sudden you get something that just here. I'm going to challenge you before you get into this new chapter of your life. I'm going to challenge you. Do you really want to go into this next chapter or are you just going to keep saying you want to change and go fall back into everything that you've been doing? Yeah. Cause no. it's easy, bro. Falling back into the temptation, oh, yeah. into the whole life that you've known for X amount of years. That's a lot easier than trying to completely change, especially when you know, that side is a lot brighter and a lot more fulfilling, more purposeful, but it's like, yo, you got to go through X, Y, and Z before you get there. Yeah, for Are sure. you ready for that? And there's levels. There's levels. Like I said, I yeah. had already mastered some. I thought I was already on point. And then that whole incident happened yeah. in uh, 2014. And yeah. um, from there, that was that took me way to a whole so other level. this was 2014. You're already in acting. Uh, yeah, I was actually <laughs> right before that. Um, yeah. yeah before let, that, I mean, let's shine, let's shine some yeah. light on there. You, yeah. You're an actor also yeah. that you've been a part of some amazing projects. Yes, sir. Uh, Fast, Fast, Seven, Fast 7, right? NCIS. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, 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 I, I have everything, like, kind of days, Chicago PD Chicago also, PD, man. Yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you're a part of Longmire. Yeah, I did uh, two episodes on Longmire. I was out in New Mexico. They flew me out there. I was out there for, like, two weeks. I was just telling know. Chris, I was like, bro, I used to, I watched like all the seasons of Longmire on there years ago. And, I'm, and then when I read it, I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> man. So pretty much I'm an extremist. Anything I do, I, I do it hundred percent. I don't have fast nothing. And anything that I do, just like acting, it kind of got brought upon me through homeboy industries, you know, the, the yeah, nonprofit yeah. organization, a great, you know, father, Greg Boyle, all them. And, uh, they had a casting agency that would go there and just kind of pick people to come out in shows. And uh, with Richard Cabral, a couple, he was a good friend of mine back in the days. We've kind of lost touch uh, throughout the years, but uh, I kind of got led through it through that way, through Homeboy Industries. I was there, you know, getting some services done, tattoo yeah. removals. And because, yeah, after that whole <laughs> kind of stabbing, you know, I went through a whole transformation. I had my eyelids tattoos. I had a question mark right below my eye. I had a zipper handle here. I had a halo on the top of my forehead, like, I've done tattoo removal. Yeah, my arms are getting, I was down, getting removed. My neck is getting removed. I went through a whole, after getting stabbed, but even before that, I was already changing. Like, it was yeah. slowly progress. And uh, pretty much, that's how it was. There was a casting agency, LA Casting. They seen my, they seen me, and they were like, dude, we could want to represent you. You know, we, you have good energy. And and it was just based off of uh, Homeboy Industries. And yeah, I went to Burbank, signed up, did some headshots, and I started getting sent on auditions. And, not for nothing, but, like, anything I do, like, and it put my mind to it, I, I could succeed. Whether it was a rapping or the act, whether it was gangbanging, you know, I'm an extremist. Whether it was getting tattoos, I'm an extremist. I go 100% with it. Or removing them, I'm removing mainly all yeah. of them. Basically, it put you in there and you're, yeah. you're going you're to figure and it out. Master it. And uh, I've been like this, I was little with yeah. everything that I do. And uh, so, yeah, I got into the whole acting. and then Mayans. The, yeah, the Mayans. I Sons booked, of Anarchy. I booked the pilot for the Mayans. <laughs> so that was my whole turning point why I left the, the acting. Uh, I got a huge heartbreak. You know, I had booked the Mayans. The pilot shot it. I was with them for about a month and a half. We got, I'm one of the reasons why, one of my characters, uh, you know, uh, it was uh, it was Yuki. That was a character, which means happiness in, in Japanese. You, yeah, Y-U-K-I. I was one of the main characters. And, uh, and pretty much I self-sabotage myself for that. Um, mm. I wow. I gave out too much information. And I, I gave a release date and everything, and they dropped me. And I went through this whole, like, just bro it was it was a very big heartbreak they were already like dude you're gonna get so and so much for season i shot the pilot i was with emilio rivera everybody and and uh and it's crazy i didn't understand it now i mean i understand it then but like um part of a warrior i consider myself a warrior a spiritual warrior and pretty much me even acknowledging that i summons war against me because uh, i am fighting a good fight you know and uh pretty much um at that time i didn't know what it meant but sometimes the warriors calling is self-sabotaging or self-sacrificing for the greater good of others you know and at that time i was just so excited no one has schooled me on just being you know <laughs> not spoiling certain details and information yeah, and the business side of yeah, everything i had i spoke a little yeah. too much and based off of my little interview i had one of the filmings uh they started oh the release because i gave the release date of when the <laughs> episode and so yeah. everybody in production got mad at me and like people stopped talking and like next you know they might just calls me like dude you, you've been dropped 
And I'm like, what do you mean I've been dropped? Like, yeah, like, I don't know, like, what's going on? Because yeah. I, I, I got an agent real quick. I did the whole background work for a couple months. And right away, they're like, you know, you, you're eligible for SAG after the union. And, you know, of course, me still, you know, in the cannabis industry, I've always had a little extra money to be able to invest in stuff, which a lot of people don't because you have to pay so much money. So a lot of people remain non-union actors background and not stepping up to speaking roles and all that and so right when i was eligible i paid the whatever three four thousand which a lot of people don't because they don't have that money yeah. you know, just, sitting around. just to kind of invest into something that you don't even know what the return is yeah bro. but to it it's with everything business your next move hey you got to pay three thousand for this but you don't you know this is just an opportunity you got to pay to play that's the that's the the line you got yeah you got to pay to play so yeah from there i just kind of you know I didn't realize the whole, but that was another big part of my, my transformation too. getting dropped from the mines after I was already selling the milk before having the cow, that how they say, you know, my grandma's always said that no, no, la, la, la leche sin teniendo la vaca, you know, which means don't be over here. Yeah. You know, like when I was, I was, it got to me, I, my followers started going crazy and like it kind of, I was already in that mine and pretty much. Once I got dropped, I was like, F Hollywood, F this acting shit. Like, I'm going to make it regardless. You know, like, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a come back to Hollywood when I'm more straight, when I don't need it, when I'm just doing it because I love the performing arts, when I love the... Because yeah. it's not... I've been performing since I was little. I used to dance for Clorico from when I was seven to when I was like 11, like 10. And then I hit my coup phase. You know, I used to dance for Clorico, me, my older brother, Valle de los, Mar uh, de los Viejitos, everything. Like, all that full-blown folklorico, like, dancer and... Wow. And, uh, and so being rhythm and you know beats and dancing and being in front of crowds and you've been you've yeah, been in yeah. this so yeah. it was you know like it was something that i kind of already was in it i hit 11 and i hit my cool phase i was embarrassed i i even went through years without <laughs> mentioning that i danced i was embarrassed even mentioning to people that i danced yeah you know, and, uh, it's because you were trying to fit in yeah you're I mean, trying to fit in with everybody and, and it's so right like that whole little uh thing of trying to fit in with everybody i don't want to talk about my past because that was corny you thought I was I was corny and uncool yeah. while you're the cool kids are standing over there with everybody. And one thing I tell everybody is like, yo, like those cool kids now, what are they doing? You know, it's different. Yeah. You know, I I've even some of the, the people I went to high school with, they were the nerds. One of them is about to be a doctor. The other fool I played soccer with that's a nerd is a doctor now. The other dude is living life in his home in his homeland. I'm like, but well, people made fun of y'all, huh? Yeah. But y'all changed tables the, turn, you know. Tables turn. Now that the sure. whole corniness is that's longevity. Yeah. Not falling sure. into the whole trying to fit in part of it. It's what it's what gives you a, a step ahead. Yeah. But again, how we said it since the beginning of this podcast, you know, te tienes que caer. Yeah. You gotta learn. Yeah. You know, you gotta have life changing experiences that are gonna give you a realization like, hey, what are you doing? If you go down this route, this path, you can lose it all. And if you lose it all, who you do? What are you gonna do? You can quit, or you can just be a victim of your of your own self sabotaging. Yeah, that's crazy. Like I, I love that you mentioned the whole self sabotaging part because a lot of people don't comprehend that just yet. They think it's the world against them, and it's like, wait, you you're telling me X, Y, and Z that they did this to you, and that person did this to you. Your job did that to you, but what did you do? Exactly. And what do you do to change it? You're a father of three. Yes, sir. So your knowledge and your leading skills have to be on point. Because if you fail, your next generation has a probability of almost failing or failing. I mean, again, depending on everybody's life experience, right? Because we are a part of our environment, but it's what we do with what we've been around, right? My dad could be a quote-unquote a loser, and it's up to me along the line to, I got to change this, right? If you're in the system of, of whatever, of, if you're in the system, it's up to you to change your outcome, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, our school system, sometimes it's a little, <laughs> it's, a, it's a little it's, tough. It's a little tough, but yeah. um, it, it's awareness. And I feel like you have been, you've been aware of so many things throughout your life and now you're like again your energy the first time eating and you're like no i've yeah. I've, I've had life changing experiences yeah energy auras and frequencies those are real bro and i i ride those waves you know the father frequency i i 
constantly post that on you know my social yeah. medias. You know, Father Frequency Forever. I lost my father three months after I got stabbed in Mexico. Um, he was uh, poisoned, killed. We still don't know the details, but um, from one day to another, he he pretty much passed away. You know, he was with a group of people and. He was already, you know, he had got deported. He was out there. Only, he was only out for about a year and a half. and But he was already, you know, doing his thing out there, you know. And uh, he did, my dad, background on my dad, he was a straight, you know, gangster, you know. To, that was his thing. Like, yeah. he came from Mexico at a young age. He was born in Mexicali, Baja California. And he came out here and he joined the gang. And he always told me, we did it just because of protection. You know, he was in Bell Gardens. They had Bell Garden white boys, which was a very racial, you know, some, you know, there were more Caucasian white dudes yeah. against the Mexicans and, he joined the gang for protection and because they were just bullying them and everything. And uh, so my dad was a straight, you know, he was like a oh, paisa gee. homie. Like he was <laughs> from Mexico, but he was, you know, he was a sureño and he just started going a lot to prison and everything and got deported a few times, would come back. And this last time he did like five years in federal prison and he was like, you know, mijo, I'm going to try to live out here. I'm not going to go back, and but I'm going to try to establish myself out here. And, and I knew what that meant. You know, my dad, he, he's always been a go-getter, hustler and, he started just, you know, doing his thing out of Mexicali and uh, ruffled some wrong feathers. And they were just, it wasn't, you know, and pretty much that, that's that's what's kind of said that uh, he got poisoned. He, mm. he got killed in, in, in Mexicali, which three months, you know, so I'm barely healing. He got, uh, he, he passed away February 16, 2015. So literally October, that, that's, that happened to me. I was barely healing because I couldn't eat. I couldn't cough. I couldn't use the restroom much because my whole stomach. Yeah. <laughs> and come February, he, he passed yeah. away. So that father frequency with me stays heavy. You know, I'm, I'm pretty much, yeah, I'm, I'm big on that. You know, like, yeah. you know, being the leader, being a, about lessons and, and teachings. Like, I really, I'm, I base my my kids' upbringings on lessons and teachings and yeah. breaking habits, breaking patterns and being aware of their surroundings and really, like, a warrior. Like, that. that's pretty much, I live my life as a warrior and all that energy frequency, I yeah. embrace it. I, I take it. I read auras, energies, my intuition, my guide, like has evolved even more, which staying away from alcohol, which doing certain uh, ceremonial, you know, like, you know, Native American, old indigenous ways, you know, swear a yeah. lot of ceremonies, a lot of vision quests, a lot of plant medicine, power, DMT, mushrooms, all that. I'm, I'm a big advocate for a lot of that. Um, my, my motto is plants over pills. Like I definitely... You know, I I rather you know no pharmaceutical. I'm anti pharmaceuticals. I'm anti a lot of that. You know, even with my kids, like no you know teas, honeys, lemons, like before they go run to Nike wheels and all this <laughs> other shit. You know, and so pretty much yeah, that you know that father frequency is real, yeah. man. And my dad was a G growing up. That's all I wanted to be, just like him. And yeah, I ended yeah. up being just like him. Yeah, kind of, you know, we kind of jumped the gun on that one. But um, February two thousand, February sixteenth, two thousand fifteen. Uh, 2000, uh, yeah, yeah, 2015. 2015. That's when my, my father passed away. Life yeah, changed. Mexicali went out there and me and my dad, yeah, he meant the world to me. I lived with him. Out of all my brothers, I got sent to go live with him because my mom couldn't handle me. That was the thing. And me and my dad, we built a, a tight bond, you know, like father, like son. And pretty much, uh, you know, and they called him El Gato Loco. He was tall. He had colored eyes. Yeah. And, um. And that's my connection with the cat, you know, the jaguar. You know, I pretty much, my religion is the ways of the jaguar, the provider, protector, the hunter, the gatherer. Like, I, you know, this is, you know, people might think this is ego stuff. This is more ego stuff. You know, this is like voyeurism. You know, I connect with yeah. the past. You know, you in your journey, you find a shiny rock or something. You, you create earrings for your daughter. You, you hang it on your neck. Like, you know, I'm, I'm speaking about my indigenous people, you know, how we would, you know, wander the, the lands and find certain gem stones and all that we would wear it proudly you know our collections and this has nothing to do with ego it has to do more with warriorism you know my hard work me who i am representing this is the jaguar on my neck and the ways of the of the jaguars did that change your did that day change your life completely oh yeah losing my father so i went to three blow two blows back to back yeah you're, a few months and yeah from there yeah just El dolor de, you know, de, per, de perdiendo un padre, you know, the, the hurt of losing a father is something different, you know, and it's just, it was very painful for me, definitely, um, I went through, through, a lot, through a lot, you know, I couldn't, it was just hard for me to deal with. Yeah. You know? So, like, now for you, because how you said your, your dad is an amazing person, did what he did, lived the way he lived, you're your father's son, now how do you make your dad proud? Man, just by being, 
being the father that I know he he would you know he was trying to be with with us you know for certain reasons um he couldn't get to it you know there was just a lot of distractions in the way um just to get into details my mom was born here he was born in Mexico so there was always this little uh the, they just couldn't you know my mom too her ways of being towards him like I, at a young age I started seeing you know and like my dad just he loved the loquera you know he always had a saying uh, soy como soy that was his thing like I, I am how I am like this is me <laughs> and yeah. And he just, you know, my mom, she left the life because she was, you know, her, she didn't, you know, she was crazy herself, too. At a young age, she had my brother. She was a teenage mom, had my brother when she was, like, 15, had me when she was 16, like, within the 11-month span, you know. She had, you know, turned 16 with me. And so I was, you know, teenage parents, and they were, they used to love the party, the life. And I grew up watching them, and pretty much I wanted to party up, be up all night, wondering, damn, how do you guys stay up all night? Yeah. And, we wake up, we're going to sleep, we wake up because they're still partying. So do you think you went through that whole, your whole life, or you entered that lifestyle because that's what you were introduced to? Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. My parents. Um, so how do you how do you leave that life? How do you, what's the change? I've, like, I, we understand that, again, you went through a life-changing experience, but you said prior to that, you're already trying to make that change. So, I mean, again, this is advice for the people that are trying to live, trying to leave a, leave a life that they were presented and live their whole life upbringing. You're breaking cycles. This is the thing. You're going to break a cycle. How do you break a cycle when this is all you've known for X amount of years of your life? I mean, for me, honestly, and it could be different for anybody, yeah, but for me, it was uh, finding out that I was going to be a father. At uh, like 20, 21, that's when I found out my son's, he's about to be 16 now in April, my oldest. Um, you know, so pretty much around 20, 21 years old, after my whole like meth habit and all that, which that was very traumatic too. Cause through my whole meth habit, like the last few months and the last year of my meth habit, I was so paranoid. I, I couldn't, I just thought, it, you know, it was this ugly state of me being to the point where like, I couldn't even wow. be right. You know, like in my own neighborhood, I thought my own friends were going at it. I was going at it with my own gang, some people from my own gang. And it was just all bad, you know? And, uh, and it was, it was, uh, I was under the influence. So pretty much, Around that time, I found out I was going to be a father, and I kind of just had to leave. I had to, you know, pretty much leave. Yeah. And around that time, also my grandma, the only pretty much household in, in El Sereno that I had to go home and run to, um, she had lost her home. Like, they had repoed it. It was a, a lot of stuff. So she had to move away, and I had no choice. I didn't want to go to, so like I said, me and my older brother were totally different. He's a UCLA graduate. He went, he got a scholarship for academics to UCLA. I am, you know, so we were, we went down totally different paths. He was, you know, always in school. So it's like the good brother, bad brother story, you know? And uh, yeah. so yeah. pretty much at that time he was at UCLA and uh, my grandma lost her house in Alcerino and she moved all the way to Ontario in the IE. And I was like, hey, oh no, I ain't moving out of the, my hood. Like that's too far. Like I ain't going to the IE. It was the whole young mental state and I really had nowhere to go. So I was staying from homie to homie's house, you know, for months and in the streets and just, I knew I could have gone to Ontario and lived at my grandma's house. My mom was already remarried, and, you know, she already had her husband in Ontario. But we kind of, you know, we didn't really see eye to eye. You know, me and my, I went three years without talking to my mom. Um, in a sense, she put me in, in, like, you know, in the system. You know, I was in a foster home in, like, a placement. It's a, it's a boy's home. I AWOL'd uh, <laughs> the New Year's of 99 and 2000. I was just telling this story the other day. We thought the world was going to end, and I was in a placement, a boy's, a group home. And it was the New Year's of 99 and 2000 and the whole Y2K thing. And I was like, dude, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm maywald. So I, I absent without leave, without leave. I AWOL'd that place and I was on the run around that time. But I was God, 99 man. and 2000 New Year's, the whole year was going to end. The world was going to end. I was like, dude, I'm leaving that, that day, New Year's Eve. I, I left and I called my dad and he picked me up and my dad would always back me up no matter what he'll, you know, and. Yeah, so that's pretty much, like, my whole thing. My brother went to UCLA. He was at UCLA, and I didn't want to go to Ontario, so I asked my brother, what's up? Can I?" And honestly, that was a big changing point. shout out to my brother for receiving me. And I was the guy on the couch. But um, at UCLA in Westwood, and my, my brother had a, it was like student housing. It was an apartment. And so I left my area, my gang area, and I want to go live with my brother out at UCLA. And uh, oh. I was that bad brother. You know, the whole, oh, you know, we're trying to help him. But I was also the brother that can get any drug that anybody wanted you know and so you were you were you were there <laughs> sleeping but you were there also needed yeah yeah so yeah. whatever the weed whatever they needed any energy for them to stay up study up all night you for got the it. finals i had everything <laughs> that they needed so right there i started seeing a different that's where i actually got my first job at it was at a my first job ever i was like 
Damn, I forgot what. Yeah, uh, it was at Chili's. I was like at Chili's. I, I was a host, and I got my first job, and and from there, like, I, I just started seeing a different life out in Westwood, like, and you know, Wilshire District, all that like area. Like, I started yeah. seeing. I would go to my certain classes with my brother because they don't take roll car or nothing. So I'll sit in the stadium seats and just learn and soak up, and I'll walk around campus with like a backpack, and I started knowing like a lot of people there, and like. For sure, that big, moment, you know, us yeah. losing the house, you know, getting bankrupt or whatever. Um, changed you. Changed me. My brother was at UCLA. He was like, well, you come over here. I was still kind of dabbling, running back from yeah. my neighborhood to UCLA. But it, That's crazy how, huh? like, when you leave your environment and you go in, you step foot into another one, and and it's awareness, right? Right? Like, I grew up in Baldwin Park, SGV, and we're good, right? Like, it's, it's a good city. It's dope. But once you leave there... You, you can tell the world is different. There's more opportunity. There's there's bigger buildings. There's a better life. There's more opportunities, more connections. You know, it's not us against them. It's, bro, it's you against you. Yeah. Oh, they don't accept. Why don't they accept you? What's the reason why you're not there, right? Again, we're we're in the whole Hispanic Chicano movement. Okay, what's what can we create to get us there? Now, yeah, the people and the big restaurants, nice restaurants, the bus boys and the waiters look like us, right? Well, why are, why can't we be there? Why can't we change it? Yeah, change you know of environment. I mean? change, a change of environment definitely can broaden your horizon, can can make you think different, can and that's pretty much yeah. So my biggest change changing point was the change of environment. Yeah. Was the Yeah, because you're going you're going from city, right? You're in your, your movida already, yeah. and you're going into a whole, 360 turnaround. Oh, I I heard this. It can't be a 360 because if you do a 360, you end up right back right, where you're right, at. Yeah. So it's a 180. 180. You end up at a 180 at a whole different stop. Yes. And look at this. It's like when you go on the bus, you're at one stop and you're seeing your city. You miss your stop. You end up at a whole other city. You're like, oh, shit, what is this? Oh, I kind of want to be here now. Yeah. Hey, that's where we traveled in Newport, Orange County. We traveled to Santa Barbara, different areas. Bro, it's expand your area. You're not just meant for this anymore. Like, yeah, our whole system is meant for, this is all you're good for. I'm going to tell you what you're good for and what you can be. A school teacher, you can be uh, at the warehouse. But, hey, did anybody tell you you can be an entrepreneur? Did anybody yeah, tell you what, that there's more, you can create your own money? Yeah. Like, it's different. And now I see why, like, your whole entrepreneurship, having your trucks, having your business, you applied everything you learned. Everything I learned. From point A to point B to... Your bad days to your your good days, and you just said, "I'm gonna create mine." Yeah, that's pretty much yeah. Because even the roles that you played again, you you played roles in Fast Seven, you mm-hmm. played roles in NCIS, you played roles in Mayans, you played roles in uh, Murder, Fox, yeah, yeah, Chicago PD, Long Mike. You did so many acting jobs as the persona that everybody perceived you at, and you're out here showing kids that may look like you, people that look like you, and Hey, our life isn't that. Look at look where I'm at. I'm on. I'm a dad. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a leader. This is different. You can change your narrative for sure. You can, yeah, definitely. And I mean, that's a beautiful thing. You know, once you're able to detach from that, because a lot of people, it's hard. It's hard, bro. And yeah, like they, even you you have your hometown just even still trying to pull you back. Yeah, even some, if you move away, like yeah. that's one of the biggest things that I had to deal with was me. You know, because I was so involved with my homies. And at one point, I was like, I'm going to ride for them. I'm going to die for them. And yeah. I'm going to kill for them. Do whatever I had to do. And yeah. me just taking that rapid, just just pause, like, definitely, you know. And then you had, you know, your the people that, you, you know, in your nest, your kuna, you know, the people that were yeah. birthed with you and all that. Like We feel like we owe them. Yeah, no, we owe them the whole thing. They feel like, hey, what's up? Like, you switched up. Like, what? Yeah. You know, you don't come around no more. Like, what? Like, it's like and they don't understand that and like some people and believe it or not a lot of people stay in their same 20 to 30 mile you know the average life yeah. lives within 20 i've read that before that 30 to 40 miles you know that average life yeah. that's all they know they never travel outside of that and yeah i mean i take i take in consideration everything bro like growing up right you have your aunt and uncle that live at these apartments that the whole town knows them every apartment knows each other but why They've been there for 20 years, 20, yeah. 30 years. I see my cousins grow up, right? It's like, yo, you know, we, there's a lot of opportunities out there. You know, we can leave it, right? Like, oh, why'd you, why'd you leave to West Covina or to that? 
bro, I, <laughs> there's other places. It's that you know? comfort zone. It's that comfort zone. That people and and it's so crazy and, and it, it may hurt some people's feelings, but you know, I, sometimes I don't understand why I see a eighty thousand dollar car in an apartment that's all fucked up, and it's like, so you're paying eighty thousand. $80,000 car, but you don't want to change your living situation. Yeah. You know? What about, and again, fathers, schooling, the districts. The safety. We, the, the safety. safety. Yeah, we the know the districts that we're in, and we know that we, if I went through this high school, and I know, the, I know the surrounding areas and the kids, but I know that side over there, and I see that, that living over there. And again, I can't, I can't put them in a little cocoon and, like, protect them all the time, but. I could put them aware of surroundings. And if I can lesser the dangers, for sure. Why not? You know what I mean? Like, you know, there's, I, I always tell uh, my kid's mother, like, hey, we're going to put them in some good school, school systems. Why? Like, there's, I'm like, no, no, no. Opportunities, you know? Yes, yeah. There's more over there. More than likely, some sometimes where we grew up, maybe. I can count my hands how many kids go to a uh, university, full ride. But if we go down the street, I can count, <laughs> not with my only hand, but with other people's, how many kids go to opportunities like that. They get exposed. So migration, that's my biggest thing is <laughs> migration. Yeah, I, yeah. Like I said, I think like a jaguar. Like yeah. I, I, I'm animal-like living. Some people are like, oh, mm-hmm. you're, you're an animal. Like, no, it's not. I'm an animal-like living. Like, pretty much I adopted my studies that I've read so many books on and just how yeah. we would mimic nature, we would mimic animals, you know, their survival tactics, their, yeah. the ways of migrating and pretty much I've adapted that to my life. Like, and I've accepted that. Yeah. In order to get to places, sometimes you cannot be stuck in the same zip code, same areas with, with your same friends. Not only do the minute you start getting blessed with, with any progress, your neighbors, let alone your even family members. I've had, you know, family members unfollowing me for no reason just because I'm I glorify, you know, yeah, my accomplishments. Like yeah. I have I'm not one to be used to being told, you know, congratulations as a young kid. I just started getting told congratulations in the last ten years of my life, a little bit less, eight years of my life. And uh so being told congratulations, all that like it was, you know, we just reaching, you know, goals and all that was not nothing that I, you know, I was able to do, but even that, like in your environment, people, yeah. oh, you think you're better than us, you're, you're accomplishing things. and yeah. But migration, you know, to be able to just like animals, you know, for more game, for more, you know, meats, for more freedom, for if this river is not producing the, the, the fish that we need to, to live, okay, well, then we got to go upstream, we got to go downstream, we got to move our, pretty much our survival rates of where we can get further. A lot of people rather just make, you know, their situations of where they were born at, their place that they're going to die at. And I've never really understood that concept. You know, I mean, at one point I was so blinded to the world outside of me that, yeah, I just stood and stuck and in and out. And that's all I knew. But after being exposed, you know, miles away here and there, Westwood, this, that, and different light ways of living. Like, yeah, I've always been an observer. I've always been, you know, a thinker and I've always seen things and pretty much that's kind of what has led to, you know, but migration, we have to migrate, you know, like, just like animals do, you know, if this ain't it for us and survival rates are lower, let's go to other places where survival rates are higher, where we could definitely see our kids, kids, kids or something, you know, cause being in the hood, all that, like the stress, the drama, the constant, just, I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, I, in the hoods, I love the hoods, all that, but it's just to get into a certain point, you know, you have to make yeah. decisions either, you know, you stay stuck in the same place. And yeah, I think one of the, um, my grandpa has said, because we lost my uncle uh, when he was like 40, but my grand- one of the things that I learned was a parent never wants to outlive their kid. That's true. For a parent to bury their kid, oh, wow. Just even the thought yeah. of me, you know, with my children having to bury, like, no, yeah, you never want to do that. Yeah. Of course, and, you know, just pretty much longevity, survival, that's my biggest thing is survival and, you know, and seeing yeah. as much as the world and as much as different cultures and feel like i feel like your your faith is just strong bro yeah <laughs> i believe in just mother nature you know father son sister moon mother earth and pretty much just that's yeah. my religion people are like what do you you know you're so successful i've been told by my loved ones family members you don't have a virgin mary you don't have a cross in your business so you don't get it blessed by priests it's like nah, like 
oh, well, what do you pray to? You're so you know successful, and I, I know people you know pray to certain things to make them successful. I was like, nah, I don't, I don't go to church. Don't get me wrong, the church, you know, people find their ways. I just, yeah. I, I woke and you know, I seen what the church was. I seen what you know when when they came over the conquest cortez and you know believe in this we had a beautiful culture you know we were one of the most advanced i'm saying we as in the mexicas the toltecs the mayans like we mm. were astrologies we were combat agriculture spiritually we were advanced at yeah. 13 14 we were graduates of university you know cuactemo the youngest leader of you know of our empires you know aztec mexica empire like these people were so in tune with everything wow. astrology you know yeah. all that a lot of the time everything a lot of the stuff we were one of the most advanced civilizations at the time way yeah. more than the roman catholic church with all due respect and when they came over they seen our beauty our feathers our culture our music our foods and our agriculture our aqueduct systems and pretty much that's when they were like and we're so giving we're so loving yeah. and and that's so people tell me what's your religion my religion is yeah mother it's my energies and this is stuff that like it just awoken in me. I, I mean, I read a lot and everything, yeah. but a lot of the stuff that is in tune with me is stuff that I already know. Like, can't nobody tell me certain things. Like, my past life, I've had certain ceremonies where I'm able to see yeah. myself running through the forest while leaves are hitting me as a jaguar. Like, my past life, I was a jaguar. Through what's, certain what's that? Um, There's a, a certain, uh, like, plan or ceremony that people Ayahuasca. do. Ayahuasca, yeah. right? So I do DMT, and I do it pretty much it's not like a you know everyday thing it's pretty much it calls me and uh dimethyltryptamine it's found in our third eye our pineal gland and you know for those who don't know it's it's pretty much a gland here that most people have it calcified a lot of people have it it's hard like a rock from yeah. based off of all the bullshit that we get fed fluoride in our waters all this bullshit you know um pretty much it looks like a you know a woman yeah, yeah. a woman it looks like a little a clit you know yeah. with all the respect and the whole thing about it is to keep it moist, to keep it, you know, wet and to keep it self-love, you know, to keep yourself aroused in a sense. And once that puppy is activated, like you live life in a whole different way. It's called the third eye for a reason because you see things different. And mine's is act mine's is act. I've been with real medicine men. I've done real ceremonies. You do, so you've done ayahuasca and everything? Not, not I, I haven't sat with ayahuasca, but I've done forms of DMT. Mm -hmm. Ayahuasca activates DMT. Um, yeah. Pretty much DMT is found in every living organism from plants, animals to us. And, and, and do you, for that, like, do you have to have like a certain person that's already been familiar with that to kind of lead you into it? Or, yeah, be, because again, this is something more intriguing for those people that are wondering and like thinking about it, right? Like, yeah. I, I've never done none, none of that, but I'm intrigued. So, like, how would you enter that, that type of space? Because again, I've, I've heard that even doing ayahuasca, it's once you go through that, you live life clear yes it's different yeah bro life-changing experiences um pretty much of course the amazon is here now in the states before you would have to go to peru and and the amazon rainforest and sit down with a shaman and all that but a lot of it has already crossed borders we figured out how to do things just how to get it you know make it synthetic you know there's even synthetic forms of it but people get the root and the bark they'll order it from different parts of the world and they'll create it here and pretty much the medicine is is evolving like tremendously yeah. where even in the city in the midst of traffic you can definitely heal no matter in the south in the jail cell you can heal and wherever you're at like you can yeah. definitely reach those levels of activating your pineal gland activating your higher self yeah. ways of living of thinking and yeah dmt there's a pure form ayahuasca is more like a longer it's hours you know so it's a lot less calmer dmt is a straight 20 30 minute you're gone you're you close your eyes and and you you go to dimensions bro and the dimethyltryptamine is something that yeah. it works better for me since we're so busy with time and everything. Like yeah. we don't got time to go to the rainforest and spend a whole day <laughs> drinking teas, brews, and yeah. and just seeing things. Like I, I I do a lot of healing amongst myself here, and I've you know helped heal others. I I definitely the medicine and the medicina. You know la la cultura cura. That's like my my biggest thing that I teach and that I connect with. And I've I've had maestros. You know like shaman. You know that that I've worked with that have um have really sat me down and guide me through and they've seen certain oh. things in me that I don't see in me like dude you you have something you know there's something about you and you know you're 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 old yeah. you're, you got ancient wisdom and and when you go through these ceremonies you get gifted there are certain dimensions and pretty much it's with your eyes closed because seeing the world would just look there's too much energy here and when you close your eyes on these DMT trips like 
it's a beautiful thing, bro. I'm definitely a believer of that has helped me change a lot. It has helped me reach levels of knowledge and wisdom that yeah. I would have not been able to. How do you, how do you apply that knowledge and that wisdom that you get from there into like your business, into your daily li- living? Just everything that good frequency food, man. Like, I don't know if you guys, you know, the El Arabachi, our biggest thing is, you know, good frequency food. That's, yeah. that's my hashtag. <laughs> if you go on it, it's pretty much mine. I see other restaurants and other people are trying to start using that, but I'm I'm the originator of the good frequency food. I definitely believe in that. I believe in uh, intaking food and energy transfer. You know, a lot of people are eating food nowadays that's fake, that's being put together by miserable hands and you're transferring that misery so you consume it through your mouth is the oldest way of casting spouts through potions and and all that like being fed something or you know you hear about all those the girls spaghetti you know yeah. and, you know <laughs> when they're on their you know like you've heard yeah, you yeah. know like in history that through your mouth is one of the oldest forms of casting spouts or of empachados or doing mal to somebody you know and yeah. like pretty much that that's real i apply the, the good frequency like from the minute that we purchase it from the minute that we prep it, like all good frequency, and I believe in energy transfer. If it's made, you know how they say when the salsa's hot, it means that the, they were mad when they made it. You know, <laughs> so all that it, it has its real connection, and yeah. I apply all my spirituality into the feng shui of even how things are set up, how the yeah. energy of what gets done first, what gets done second. Like I'm big, I do have a form of OCD. You know, a lot of things have to you know be lined up. You know, just the way my finances, my glove compartments, my closets my my house like i have that in me and i've had it since i was young and some people find it a problem you know something like damn you're too much like no boy it is what it is i'm a perfectionist i'm an extremist like and so i apply all that the spirituality the whole you know yeah what is it you get a new i'm i'm too much but am i too much for you (laughs) or (laughs) right like again you're not you're not for everybody not everybody's for you yeah you know so that's like that whole next question of like how do you Figure out who stays in your life and who leaves. Honestly, my cutoff game is 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 cold. My cutoff game of like family members of like I really I've detached. I've lost so many people that meant to me, and I've lost so many things that to a point where like I I don't I don't beg nobody to stay in my life. Like I've I, I'm a loner, you know. Like honestly, me from that getting stabbed moment, I used to be into sports. All the Lakers playoffs, I'll be at bars, this and that, and just. Yeah holding a drink, ah, acting like I care. And it's like after that awakening, that state of me, my near-death experience and my real awakening, I stopped going to my uncle's houses and drinking. So I started being, oh, look, you know, being talked about like, oh, look, at you know, here's brother Joey. Like they thought it was a religious thing and it wasn't, a, it was a more of a spiritual thing because I didn't go yeah. straight into, the, I didn't go to the church. I left the church after that. I I would pray to Jesus and all that when I would go to jail and young and messing up and I never, I would go to the prayer circles and in the dorms and, you know, in jail yeah. and all that. But I never felt that real strong connection until my spiritual, my spirituality got, Outside, yeah. got activated after, you know. So you don't beg I, nobody to stay. No, I don't. Honestly, my cutoff game and honestly, I'm pretty distant from a lot of people. A lot of people like it's a, me, my kids and my wife and my business associates, partners and, and even those, they come and go. So I pretty much, uh, I pretty much, yeah, just do my own thing. I mean, I'm, I'm busy most of the time to where I even apologize to some of the genuine good friends that I have that like, dude, I'm sorry. Like, I'm yeah. just, you know, right now at these times, like eventually when the kids are out of the house and all that, we're going to probably, you know, I tell my wife, dude, like, we're going to, are we going to be lonely later on? Like, because we don't, our friendship, like even to have friends right now, it's like, man, like I'm trying to build an empire, like yeah. future, for future generations to come. It's and, for the people to understand, like, they understand that, well, the ones that want to understand that life is busy. And if you want to create something great, it takes time and it takes it takes money and it takes emotions. It takes energy. And if you don't understand the shit that we're going through and you're complaining, you're compl- I'm sorry, bro. Like, yeah. this shit's moving. Time, time waits for nobody. No perdona. El tiempo no perdona. Right? So if either you're going with us or you're going apart from us. And it's one of those things where you got to make that decision on your own. And the average human lives for Friday, Saturday, and Sundays. Yeah. And me, those are my big. I have food trucks. Those are our biggest. So yeah. We're off Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. So it's like, but I love that oppositeness. Like, yeah. That it's real entrepreneurship. Like when you can, you know, like yeah. Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays are days off. Like those are our weekends. Like you, yeah. we, we go to theme parks, it's empty. <laughs> we go to restaurants, empty. It's like, yeah. We live the opposite, but 
we it, 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 yeah. it's only people in that grind and that entrepreneurship and that real survival mode because yeah. I'm in survival mode. I ain't in relax mode. I'm 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 up early every day, five, five thirty. I can't even sleep in. Even on the weekends, my kids, my wife, damn, like they complain sometimes. It's like, nah, well, I don't know. Like I'm already used to being up at five, five thirty. Gotta get going. That. You got okay, maybe give or take, I'll stay asleep till yeah. six, six thirty, but I just gotta be even if I sleep late and all that, like my I never get my full eight hours of sleep. Hell yeah. no. Like I haven't had eight hours of sleep in a long time. But eight hours of sleep, what is that? Who is that? <laughs> For real, it was like five, six hours is what I'm averaging like yeah. a day, you know, and it just and I'm cool with it. I mean here and there I'll take my little naps here and there, but even then I kinda I don't even have time. Like I'm just <laughs> I'm on it and yeah. Pretty much, yeah, that's, you know, some people, you got to be in it to understand it. Some people, like I said, the average human, they teach us just Monday through Friday, yeah. Friday, this, that, and yeah. we're okay, they're living check to check. And with all the respect, everybody chooses, you know, if they're comfortable, if they settle for less. Me, I've, I, that's one of my biggest things is I don't want to settle for less. I want to see many parts of the world. I want to experience things. I want to give my kids, I want to I want to be that father for my kids that I wanted to, you know, like. Mm. I never went camping as a young child. I never knew what nature was. I never knew how to build fire pits or, or, you know, or tents or none of that. And, yeah. and now I'm to the point where, you know, like I'm, I'm experiencing all that nature, being around nature, just in the air, just okay. out there in the desert. I, I got toys and my kids, quads, motorcycles, all that. Like we go out there and we spend our time and I know how to, I do digital detoxing. I do city detoxing where I just leave everything like, I've picked up little techniques that can definitely help, you know. Longevity. Yeah, longevity and yeah. memories and, and just Hell a beautiful yeah. life, you know. That's what I'm after, a beautiful life, you know. Definitely. For sure. It could change your day. It could change your life. It could change the way you think. It could change whatever you're doing. And it starts even by, and I'm, I'm a big advocate on how are you doing. That just goes a long way. For sure. I don't know what you go through. I don't know what you've been through. I don't, I don't know your daily struggles. But this moment that we have right now, how are you doing? And if you tell me an honest, like really honest, how are you doing? Okay, this this is going to change. You know, to, we can probably, right now we're probably having a shitty morning. After the conversation, we can leave be like, damn, bro, like, eso me da motivacion. For sure. Yeah, because that person had no necessity to give me that energy or no necessity to tell me how they felt. Now my day is made. Now I owe that person or I owe it. I owe power above. I owe it to somebody. It is not me. Like, I think that's one of the things that I had to learn very, very well, where it was like, it's not up to me no more. I could do as X, Y, Z things as much as I can, but I'm not the strongest person here. I'm not the most knowledgeable person here. I'm not the, I just got to be the best me. And I got, and I have to make sure that I do what's right. I don't want to wake up tomorrow morning and be like, damn, I, I really did that. I really, I really acted a fool. You know, I regretted. I don't, I hate living life in regret. I, I, I used to a lot. Like, wake up the next, fuck, I should have never done that, bro. Yeah. Now it's like, it is what it is. Ya pasó. Now it's how we maneuver, you know? So, um, I've, I, honestly, I think with the whole conversation, man, again, you are sitting in a position where you've been, a student of your life you've been living your life but you've taken a step back in a sense where you're kind of like okay this is what i need to be doing yeah. your energy is different again how i said right now off the of camera where you're sharing with us a side of your life that again for some people they not be they may not be ready for that type of conversation but again this isn't if it's not for you it's not for you yeah. but it is for you here it is for sure right not everybody is going to be recessive to the knowledge that they get, because maybe they're just not ready. Are you proud of yourself where you sit right now? Oh, yes, for sure. And I know that's it's not, you know, I don't know if people find that wrong to be. Yeah, I'm proud. I'm proud of where I've gotten and where I've gotten my family to. And, yeah. and it's not about material stuff or what I've been able to obtain and gather, you know, because I'm a hunter, gatherer, provider, protector. I'm everything else aside from what I've been able to gather is what I'm more proud of, the protecting, the you know, just ev the migrations, you know, the, the involvements, you know, and the places I've been able to show my kids and, you know, with my hard work, you know, that's why I like all that, you know, there, you know, when it comes to the whole ego shit, you know, like some people look at it, you know, some of the stuff I share, you know, I've had, oh, you know, like 
some people tell me like, damn, it seems like you got a big ego. And it's like, nah, like, wait, this is a platform. People want to share negative shit all day. Like, yeah. why can't I share my positive and not let it rub you wrong? Why, why did my, you know, and why yeah. did you have to unfollow me? What was, what post made you unfollow me? You know, I've had family members who, like I said, I, I don't, I don't talk to much family members, you know, it's a certain few. And for that reason too, I just started evolving. I stopped going to the, the football game. I don't, you know, I used to be a diehard Raider fan and all that. Now I'm like, I put a post one time years ago after my awakening, you know, my stabbing, which ruffled some feathers. It was the whole, um, give them bread and circuses and they'll never rebound. I don't know if you're familiar with that term. Uh, it's from the Roman Catholic, you all, you know, in the gladiator days and all that. Well, they would have these big old matches that the whole cities will come to and they'll give free bread and free circuses while they're being distracted from the ports to the palaces they're they're transferring all the fine and linens all the foods all the stuff that they don't want the people to know about and it's pretty much you give them bread and circuses and they'll never rebel and that's like the way the world is being ran give them a tv give them let them go at it fight with each other distracting while while other stuff is being done behind their backs and yeah. that's something so i had put something like that it was around super bowl years ago <laughs> and um yeah it was it was funny it was that and i had had went to the grand canyon with my family i was like dude i'm not gonna sit in the city and i'm like Fuck disconnect yeah, i'm gonna disconnect why yeah. everybody's watching the super bowl i'm gonna be at the grand canyon you know with my kids and all that and from there i pulled a post and it was on my and it was like one of those yeah you know give them bread and circuses and they'll never rebound like you guys i'm over here creating memories and that thing ruffled some ugly feathers. From there on, I lost, like, family members. Like, family members stopped following me. And, yeah. and it, it was cool because it was them that it kind of hit them. You know, it, you know, if the shoe fits, wear it. And it hit them pretty hard yeah. <laughs> to the point where there was back and forth in the yeah. comments. I was defending my awakening, my standpoint. Like, nah, like, you guys have got it twisted. Like, that's not life. Like, and yeah. it's that. And I've noticed it, they have to be ready for that conversation. I'm going to argue with you, but why am I arguing with you? Because I'm trying to prove my point. You're trying to prove your point. But to an understanding where, hey, your beliefs are your beliefs. Mine are mine. We can still get along. Yeah. It's not a you against me. It's a, yo, this is a CS. Yeah. You know, what helps you helps you. What helps me helps me. It is what it is, right? Like, you're entitled to all your feelings, all your emotions. Good or bad, right or wrong, those are yours. I'm entitled to mine. Power to you, power to me. We can still get along. Yeah. That's just that's just life. And that's that has been my journey in the last few years, getting into this whole like uh you know, like food industry and all yeah. that and like dealing with customers, some customers. Um, another ruffle of feathers when around COVID. Oh, these people, you know, were, I was staying open because we had food. Yeah, trucks. hell yeah, you we were, were, staying, you were we doing booming. your thing. Yes, hell yeah. Bro, like the, I started January, our grand opening was January eleventh of two thousand twenty. So by April, May by April it was full blown COVID, all the restaurants were closed. We were able to still stay open because we had, it was outdoors, six feet distancing and all that. And it was like a little incident where people were like, oh, you know, um, I had a party, a company party around Christmas that year and nobody had masks. Because I, I, I've never been, I've never gotten the jab. I, I've always yeah. been anti all that. Like, dude, this is propaganda. It's yeah. control mechanisms. They're just trying to fear base. So I was always, so we did a party and I had comments. People were like, oh, it's a COVID party. Like, you guys, how are you guys this, that? And. So I put a post and it showed like a, it was a character, but it showed like a girl in like a wheelchair with like all kinds of food. It was like <laughs> an obese, you know, like older yeah. girl. And, and I had posted something like that. Like, nah, like it was weird. Like I had, was pretty much talking about like, nah, we're not the ones that, you know, like it's, yeah. you guys are complaining about this, but you guys have been living your lives messed up. And now this is making you reflect on your health. And like, yeah. I, it was something like that, but pretty much it was that, you know, me speaking the truth yeah. and, and letting people know, like, nah, like telling how it is. And since, you know, pretty much that's my, you know, love, light, and warrior strength. That's what I say for everything. Like, I promote love, light, and warrior strength, but some of my light does blind people, does affect people. Maybe you know, too much for some. Maybe a little too much. And yeah. so just in the last few years, I've kind of had to tone my, myself down just because people ain't trying to hear it. You know, it can affect some of my sales. So from there, I lost some followers because I posted on my El Arabachi. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, you know, you you, know, you guys are unhealthy. Yeah. Like, don't don't have us fear. It was just a little something. But from there, yeah. I've seen the negative of it. it the business side uh, of me. things, it, it it's, you know, there's, um, there's a good and bad, right? If you do a bad thing over here and you have a business or a platform, your repercussion may come over here. And, you know, now that's affected. But, again, it, it's, I think Jose said this the last time, you know, you, you can't be afraid uh, of your light because somebody else wants to dim it. Like, you can't like just because they're confused doesn't mean you're confused that like 
understanding that, like, I can have a great conversation with you. But if you're not in that right headspace or similar headspace that I am because this is my journey, you're going to think I'm attacking you in some sort of way. You're going to think I'm, again, if the shoe fits, it fits. It's not my fault. That's yours. Whatever you got to do with, that's on you. But don't, don't bring others down with you because you're just not happy with yourself. Yeah. It's okay. One day I hope you're as happy as I am. One day I hope you are as content with your life as I am. Yeah. But until you get there, don't bring anybody with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's people that are in the victim mindset want victims around them. You know, people that are going to be only in the ruedo Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. What about Monday to Thursday? What are we doing there? Yeah. What are you doing at? What time are you waking up? What's your productive day? What are you doing? Why are you tired? Why are you, why are you putting out this energy? What did, what did life do to you? You know, I used to be in that victim mindset of, man, well, life took away my uncle, my grandpa, my best friend. Life didn't give me that job. Life didn't give me that opportunity. Now it's like, there's a reason. There is a reason. I'm trying to understand it. But life changes when it's, you accept certain things in your life and you accept the reality of it and you just maneuver through it. You maneuver through the, you maneuver through the chaos. I got to maneuver through the chaos. You know, if, if we don't, then we're going to sit down and complain and now we wasted time. And like the, the saying goes, misery loves company. And honestly, yeah. like... I, I understand that now more than ever because I see how people want, you know, like they yeah. just want companies to the it, misery. Especially in your entrepreneurial mindset. <sighs> Bro, like, and then even that with my, because it's in the same flip side. I want people to join me with my, celebra- you know, not celebration, but of the things that I buy. Like, it's like, you know, going camping, getting a $20 yeah. RV and getting toys, can and all that. And I want to invite people that don't have that. They, this system, you get what I'm saying? Like, it's like, I want to invite all, I want to be that Theo with all my nephews. And, and it's like, and for certain reasons, yeah. I cannot be that Theo because yeah. whatever, you know, the partners of my brothers or what, for whatever reason, yeah, it just doesn't allow them. I want to bring everybody with me, but not, not everybody is meant to be with me. And then, you it, know, it rubs them wrong. Yeah. Don't trip, I'll pay for everything. Or don't trip, like, come, just, you guys even, just come. Even that is a just lot. Just come camping. Yeah. You just, I'll, I'll provide all the gas, all the yeah. quads. I just I'll, want you with me. Just. And yeah. they distance themselves a little more. So it's like in that same whole misery loves company, but victory also loves company. Like when we're yeah. winning, like I, I want, want everybody around I me. I want people around me, bro. Yeah. Like my kids, my, my, yeah. my their primos and, and my, my, my primos. And yeah. it's not like that. These family, oh, if you don't got it, like, what are we going to, like, yeah. why are we going to go and use your, st-? and it's like, nah, like the same way as misery loves country, uh, misery loves uh, company. I mean, yeah, misery loves company. Victory, victory loves, loves company as well. Yeah. And we want to bring people on, but a lot it, this is where I'm, I'm yeah. going through a whole transition of realizing that, yeah, it's not for everybody, you know? Has there been something in your life that you've always chased but you never got? Maybe, have, has, there, has there been a certain phrase or certain set of words that you've chased your whole life from either your parents or people in your life that were at once a big thing in your life? Did you chase something from them that you just maybe never got? Honestly the realization of how smart I can be. I mean, I'm, this is a scenario that I've always, I've always kind of explained to people like being in school and raising your hand and be like, yo, I got the answer. Like, and always getting overlooked for whatever reason and never being able to give the time as in like, yeah, like you do have answers and we're going to call on you. Yeah. With my family, it's, it's been that it's the biggest battle, especially having a UCLA graduate older brother and all that. Like, I was never the one to go, you know, mijo, read this letter for me. Like, it was just like, yeah. I was never the one to be called on, you know, and like, and I guess it's that, you know, and just to this day that I still kind of, it's it's hard to win my, my family's battles, you know, because it's not, um, yeah. my hard work, like, it's a difference when my younger brother, they walk into my younger brother's house and with his hard work or my older brothers and me, it's like a different kind of congratulations. It's not like. Uh, it's just weird, like as being. It, all right, so I'm not. I'm not trying to overstep, bro. And please tell me if I if I do. With your brother, it was known he was gonna be successful and be great. With you, it was a. Uh, eh, yes. Eh. So now all my accomplishments are not celebrated. Not celebrated the way I feel. The way I you guess wanted. I deserve. It. I guess you know after not after already right. oh, man. so many yeah, years yeah. being told that I wasn't gonna yeah. amount to nothing, and then now I'm accomplishing things. It's like. 
it doesn't get the right yeah. but if but i look at it if it was my other brothers it would be totally different you know it would yeah and you know it some people are like oh it's just you you've always felt that you know you're you're the you know brother that you know you were the bad child and like it's you you feel everyone's against you and it's like nah it's just there's still that little there's still that little something you know no matter what how you know like and I'm still that kid trying to raise up my hand in the classroom with my parents. Hey, I know. Hey, I got knowledge. I got it. And they still, oh, this pick your brother. And I'm it's just, like, dude. I'm, I'm just trying to be seen. Yeah. I'm and heard. To, and heard and understood, you know, because at the end of the day, yeah. understanding well, is, means a lot more to me. You know, like, you don't have to see me. You don't have to like me. But just understand me. Understand where I'm coming from. And and that's my drive. I'm, a, I'm an aggressive attacker. With so everything. have you worked? Have you worked your ass? Have you worked hard in order to be seen and heard? Like everybody? Oh, yeah. I mean, I feel, I feel, of course. And little by little, people are coming around, little by little, family members, you know, and is because, yeah, once they know that I'm not, I'm moving on and I don't really, you know, yeah. I'm coming back. Now it's, I guess, their fear base of like yeah. them losing me, yeah. like is allowing them to kind of rekindle. It, it's crazy. Shit. I used to search for your, for your yes. I used to search for your congratulations and your acceptance. Now I'm not. Now I'm not. Now I'm moving. And that's when they want to come around and yeah. like, hey, you know, it's, it just, it's weird. Yeah. I've, I've worked my ass off to get the congratulations and I'm proud of you. And, and I knew you could do it. And then I never got it. Now what happened? Well, now I got it. Yeah. Now I'm here. Now, whatever you used to, whatever I wanted you to tell me, I told myself. Yeah. That's now true. I don't need it. Now, if I get it, cool. And if I don't, it's all good. Because I already did it, you know, and 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 it's hard, bro. And it, it's a hard realization at the same time for for many people to understand that. But when you when you do that internal work, ain't no one taking it away. You can't take this away. You can't take the confidence. You can't take the the light in my. Life. You cannot take it away. As much as you try, no. Nope. Yeah, I'm here. I'm him. I love that. I love that phrase, Kevin Gates. I'm him. Whatever you think I am, you call me crazy, you call me a piece of shit, whatever you think, I'm him. Yeah. And then some. I know who I am. You know, to, I mean, today in the morning, I had a, just one of those moments in the, in the mirror, like, wow, we fought so hard just to get here. And look at us, we did it. We fought every day. We fought every week, we fought every month, we fought every year. Some days we didn't know we were going to get up, some days we didn't know we were going to make it. But look at us, we're here. I'm proud of you and I... And let's keep going. Let's see what's yet to come. You know what I mean? Like, and I feel like that's, that's you. Thank you. You, you fought so, so long. You went through every little bad thing in your life. And look at yourself now. Yeah. Successful. Thank you. Three kids looking up to their father, leading, leading the pack. As you said, as an animal, you're a hunter and a gatherer, but you're leading the pack. Yeah. And you're leading by example. Hey, you could start here in little to nothing to have now something. For sure. Yeah, bro. I, I'm proud of you. Thank I don't you. even know you outside yeah. of this podcast. But, man, I'm so proud of you because you could have been a victim and you could have quit and you could have just said, it is what it is. I'm done. And here you are thriving. Yeah, man. It ain't easy, man, but just. Keep on pushing. All those people who definitely, you know, are the bad seed, are the, the black sheep. I mean, all that, you know, sibling rivalries, because to say that doesn't even exist, that yeah. it's a silent, you know, issue amongst family, amongst, I mean, you know, who's happier, who's this, who's traveling, especially with the social media stuff. Everyone's yeah. in competition. And so just to be able to, yeah, have my own, you know, and build my own empire and not have to, you yeah. know, depend on anyone else. and. Yeah. I'm one not to, I, I hate asking for people for help. I, I'm one, I'll do it. Like, nah, I don't like, and yeah, it's that fire, that warriorism to keep on pushing and definitely extend that energy to whoever needs it, that motivation and yeah. just, you know, to definitely seek within, you know, and keep on pushing, bro. Cause you can live the life that you want to live. I mean, if, if the life that you want to live is, you know, at a minimal low level, it's all good. You know, yeah. like that's, if you're happy settling, it's cool. I, yeah. I'm not. I want more. I want to show my kids more. I want my kids' kids, especially with the way the world is nowadays. Bro. I want what's mine, what yeah. I deserve, what I know I need. Yeah, exactly. And I don't want a penny more. I don't want a penny less. For sure, That's man. it. Uh, really quick question, random too, but when's the last time you cried? When's the last time I cried? 
uh, a couple of days ago, actually. Uh, my daughter just turned uh, 11 on the 13th. Yeah, on the 13th. It was so just love right now. I was in there, and we were looking through pictures of when she was young. And, yeah, it just kind of got me really emotional. Yeah. Just seeing our journey, where we came from, and seeing my daughter. My daughter, yeah, just she bal- she's really activated my my balance out a lot, my feminine, masculine, and all that. And she's she's really she's special to me, my daughter. And it was just her birthday a couple of days ago. And yeah, we had a cool, deep little moment. I oh, love it. Um, if you would tell a fifteen year old you some piece of advice where you're sitting right now, what would you tell him? seek more there's more to your your block because at 15 yeah i was all about my block there's more to your street you know there's more to the world there's more to to life than what you think there is you know seek more and stay disciplined and strong-minded and warrior up you know spiritually warrior up yeah because as past 15 everything gets harder and harder and harder you know so definitely yeah I think I think you're at a the perfect chair for this question. For all the fathers that are struggling with feeling proud of themselves and feeling like they're enough, if you what would you be able to tell them? Man, just turn to your kids and look them in the eyes, hug them, put your ear to their hearts. I do that often. I hear their little heartbeats I, I, while we're laying down, and just hear that that heartbeat and what it does to you just connect with that heartbeat and know that that's a human know that there's a different universe in there that's you know and pretty much yeah definitely connect with your kids on a deeper level yeah look in their eyes put your ear to their heart and hear it that thing works for me it it makes you think of just the whole universe that's in them on a different level and, and pretty much push hard push hard for your children and Use that as your fuel. Use yeah. that as your fuel, and love it, bro. Yeah. He, uh, do you do you have a quote that you go by that you live by? Um, each one, teach one. Oh. Each one, teach one. That's like my biggest thing. I'm all about lessons and, and teachings, and my walk as a you know young, you know, pers- spiritual yeah. warrior is warriorism. Teach knowledge, teach wisdom. Each one, teach one. That's like my biggest, you know. Oh. Biggest thing for everybody <laughs> around me in general. Yeah. I, I often use that hashtag, you know, each one, teach one. I'm, I'm constantly with, with that. So each no, one, man. teach one. No, nah, man, Joey, I I appreciate you, man, yeah, more man. more than ever for taking your time out of a Saturday that I know after this you're going to work and um, just giving us your energy and your experiences and a little bit of your life of who you are and how you came up and, I, I can't thank you enough, bro. Thank so, you, bro. muchas gracias for, for coming in. Uh, I hope it helps somebody. I hope they took the lessons out of this. I hope they took the blessings out of this. And, again, if you're in a struggling position or unhappy position, well, it's your time to change. Better now than ever. Better now than ever, yeah. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Just get up <laughs> out there and from one day to another, you know, you can definitely yeah. change your situation around. Hell yeah, it ain't it ain't easy being cheesy, bro. <laughs> you know how we do, man. Yes, yeah, sir. But it's also like podcast, baby, most authentic, most organic podcast. Okay, let's go. Yeah.